Hi, and welcome back to Grassroots Crypto, where I like to teach people about crypto. And in this video, we're going to be talking about streaming swaps. So streaming swaps is a new feature within ThorChain that is about to be launched, and people have asked if I can make a video on it. So here it is. In this video, I'm going to be covering these topics. So what is streaming swaps? How is it different to how ThorChain currently does swaps? Um, what can the user control regarding streaming swaps? Uh, how does it work? and go through a bit of a detailed walkthrough uh, using a recent example and then looking at some of the risks or um, uh, drawbacks for the actual feature as well and then we'll uh, summarize. So what is streaming swaps? Streaming swaps breaks up a large swap into smaller mini swaps over a period of time. So if they're patient, if a swap is a patient, a trader can get a better price when executing a swap. Streaming swaps is similar to a time-weighted average price trade, um, but it's limited to 24 hours. And there's a specific reason for that. So how's it different? Currently, swaps are executed as quick as possible, e.g. within the same block. And the slip fee size depends on the size of the swap. However, this prioritizes the speed over the price optimization. Larger swaps can have a significant impact on the pool. They move it out of balance a lot, and that leads to higher slip fees. Streaming swaps offer a different approach by breaking up the trade into smaller mini swaps or sub swaps over a period of time. Each mini swap has a small impact on the pool, allowing it to recover before the next swap, ultimately reducing the overall slip fee that a swap is gonna pay. I want to stress that there's no discount on the slip fee or the slip fee formula. It's just um, the, adding the time dimension to get a better price for each mini swap compared to doing the swap all at once. So this picture I stole from ThorSwap kind of shows it that the time optimization is how uh, ThorChain does it now. So you, you take some you know input of say Bitcoin, you swap it, you want to do it as quick as possible and you don't really care about the price. Um, there's some stuff here for the memo. So you want to swap the input to Ethereum. You want it to this address. And this is the minimum you want to have. This is the, the limit or the price protection. And we'll talk about that in a sec. So for this band of Bitcoin, you want a minimum of 1.035 um, Ether out. And then when you have streaming swaps, you want to optimize based off the uh, price. So you're going to be breaking it up into smaller swaps here. And this specifies that we want to have nine mini swaps spaced out five blocks apart. And that, that spacing allows ARBs to reset the pool, to rebalance the pool. And that's where you, you are getting the better, the, the better price execution because of that. So the user controls uh, the price protection. This is the, the minimum asset ratio. So how much BDC to Ethereum you want. So if you want a minimum of 1.035 uh, Ethereum out, it works out the input, works out the asset ratio and ensures that you're going to get that conversion on your um, on each mini swap, else it's going to do a refund. Then you have the swap interval, which you know you could have five or 10 and that, that controls your time period. So the, the shorter the interval, obviously the less time, but then again, the less time that the pool has to, to rebalance. Then you have the swap quantity, which you can specify yourself, which obviously you can, we can control the time period, or you can let the network work it out to give you the most optimal price. So how does it work? So as we've already talked about, the streaming swaps breaks up the swap into smaller swaps. Let's just say it's 10 mini swaps, and each mini swap is executed individually allowing time for arbitrages to rebalance the pool. So let's just say it's done every 10 blocks, so it's a 10-10. So the pool balance is impacted less. So instead of one big push, you're doing one little push, so one-tenth of what it normally would be compared to swapping all at once. And because you're doing that, you're going to be paying less overall slip. E.g. the total slip fees for the mini swaps all combined is going to be much less compared to swapping the full amount all at once. This also respects the price protection. So, so as an example, if we go back to here, we said we wanted this 1.035 minimum minimum ETH out. So if it can't get that um, asset ratio, you could say conversion, that it works it out. On the first swap, the whole part gets refunded. If it can do it, say here, 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 but not here, then all of this gets um, swapped or the, these swaps will be conducted and this one isn't. Uh, so that way you're not 
you know, starting well, see all things are good at the start of the swap and then go bad at the end, it's, it's gonna refund you if it can't achieve what you've been specifying here. As I said before, there's no actual discount. You, you're using uh, the time to get a better price between the swaps, okay? You're getting better price execution by adding a time dimension. Let's have a look at a bit of a detailed walkthrough to get more of an idea. Just starting off real simple for anyone that doesn't know, we have liquidity pools, have two assets, and when a swapper comes along and they want to say they want to um, swap rune for bitcoin then they're going to be adding rune and taking away bitcoin and that that's taking the pool out of balance and that's why you pay a slip and the more you take the pool out of balance the more slip that you pay then arbs come along arbitrators come along and they rebalance the pool they essentially do the opposite of what the swap has done so they're going to add bdc and then take away rune and then that rebalances the pool and they get a fee for that and that's what brings it back into balance. So when we look at swaps, um, you send BDC in and you get Thor out, and that's the normal swap we talked about before. And it incurs inbound and outbound fees. And I just want to concentrate on this a little bit as well. And then you have a double swap, and a double swap is it goes across two pools. You send in your Ethereum, they get swapped to Rune, Rune goes to the BDC pool, um, add Rune, take BDC, and they get sent out. So there's an inbound and outbound transaction as well as well as um, two swap fees. So given that given that understanding, let's look at a whale swap. So we just wanna go through an example first on a whale swap, then breaking it up manually, and what are the, the consequences of doing that, and then how will we do this same whale swap with streaming swaps. So we have a whale swap, three BDC to ETH, um, we pay the slip and we'll get about 47.4 Ethereum out based on the numbers I did a couple of days ago. Then if we were to manually break this up, we, we could achieve a better, a better output than this 47E. So we would manually need to, and this is how it was done before, break the trade up and just say into divide by three. So one BDC in would give us um, about 16.1 um, ETH out. And by doing that, we're allowing the time for the pools to rebalance by you know, sending it in, waiting for the output, and then sending the next Bitcoin in and so on and so forth. So by breaking up the trades over time, the swapper can get nearly one Ethereum more out um, just by swap breaking up that trades. However, they're needing to pay for three times input and three times outbound fees. And these outbound fees can take away from the savings you've got by breaking up the trade. Streaming swaps is pretty much the same thing as what we've done here, except you only pay for one inbound and outbound fee. So as an example, if we swap, um, have three swaps with a flat five block interval um, based off a, you know, a limit that we would specify, then it's going to look like this. Well, a swapper sends in their, their Bitcoin to ThorChain, to the network, and then it does a trade, waits four blocks, and then does another trade, wait four blocks, and it does another trade. And these outputs are held by the network until the stream is complete then the entire Ethereum output is sent to the swapper in one transaction. So they're saving on L1 fees as well as getting the, um, the efficiency or the price optimization by spreading the trades up over time. So let's have a look at a recent example and I'm gonna be using some extremely rough numbers, but just want to demonstrate the point. So we had one swap of 727 Ethereum in and they paid approximately um, 201,000 worth of rune in slip fee. And rune's about a dollar, so let's just call it dollars. And it took probably about 12 seconds to swap, so the one ETH um, confirmation in plus the block time. And then you would have had outbound delay, um, particularly 30 BDC would have taken a while to come out. But either way, the swap got executed pretty much instantaneously. If we were to do this via streaming swaps, we would specify the price limit, and that's the same price limit that's specified here, and would say over swap every 10 blocks, and we're not gonna specify a swap quantity here because I want the network to work it out. So working this out by hand, it'll actually take about 324 swaps um, every 10 blocks, so about um, 5.5 to six hours to perform the swaps. And there would be a huge saving, about a 99.55% savings um, on a, or reduction of that slip fee because the swapper was prepared to wait, you know, five hours. Like I said, very rough figures, but that kind of gives you an idea of by, by adding time, you can get better price execution.
So Thorswap put up this image in, in a tweet by giving a bit more time, you can get an extra 184,000 out in BDC. Now, I don't know where their numbers are from here, but this kind of, again, shows you, do you want time optimized or do you want price optimized? You can just see the difference in BDC, whether you want it now or you're prepared to wait. So let's have a look at some risks. There is a risk that, as we see here, the reduction of slip means that the network is gonna have less income. That's obviously a bit of a concern. However, there's also, well, like within sales, I talk about velocity, which is how many sales you have. So your margin, it's generally margin times velocity equals your profit. Even though you're getting less amount of revenue per trade, this is gonna incentivize more trades to happen. So you're gonna have more trades that overall will produce the same amount, if not more income to the network. That's the idea. I mean, ThorChain is always played by the numbers. It's never played by individually. So if you have a look at the reduction here, obviously the slip fee is a lot less, but if you're getting, I don't know, 400 times more of these on a streaming swap, then that can make up for the reduced, um, the reduced network revenue. But that's something that's gonna have to be, I guess, you know, tracked and monitored and seen. Second part is the, as we talked about um, over here, the network is holding the liquidity and it's non-bonded. So, you know, this part here. And that's why there's a 24 hour um, limit on this because the network doesn't want to be holding all this liquidity that isn't secured. So that's a bit of a concern, but the 24 hour limit is, is there to limit that risk and that can be changed to either increase or um, decrease. Um, I guess, dependent on, on how this goes. Then we have the swap queue limit, which is currently 100, which is how many swaps can occur inside of a block before it gets um, overflows to the next block. And that's rarely hit, very rarely hit. But with streaming swaps, uh, that may be hit more and more and more. So that um, swap queue limit may need to be altered. Thanks for watching. We want more information. Uh, you can read the ADR. That's, um, that's here. You can also have a look at um, the, the docs as well as the dev docs for more information. And there'll be a Medium article that's gonna be released soon, I understand. So keep an eye on that. I'll be putting all the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, thanks, bye.